perempuan atau lelaki-lelaki mesti nak sunat lah. Tapi sekarang moden kita pun tak boleh paksa kan. Adakah nenek akan berikan pilihan kepada anak-anak nenek? Mana boleh, tak boleh mesti. <laughs> mesti nak sunat kan. Bahasa kita orang Islam kan. The, one of the biggest uh, uh, arguments for sunnah is that uh, it doesn't have any effect. You, know? you will forget about it. You will live your life normally. But I said, if it doesn't have any effect, why do it in the first place? And one of my arguments with them is like, uh, if you believe, you know, Allah will perfect, uh, will create the perfect creature, will perfect human being. Why are you even tampering with something that has been done and there has no medical uh, benefits? Okay, firstly, okay, let, let me be very clear from a gynecologist's perspective. Okay, there is no clear indication for this procedure. So there is no situation in which I feel a normal, uh, healthy baby girl requires this procedure. That's quite clear from my perspective. Because it is not a surgical procedure as such. You know, hospitals will, will do procedures that are for very clear reasons. Okay, even minor procedures like sometimes male circumcision is, is done in a hospital. You need Sometimes you need operating theatre or for older children, you need anaesthetic support and things like that. And whatever procedure that is done in hospital has are all regulated. Whereas female circumcision is... Uh, firstly, it's quite a minor procedure. So the actual reason is that it is not really a medical procedure. So it is not done in a hospital. The vulva or, or you know, the, the geni female genitalia, they're not necessarily dirty or, you know, uh, require extra cleaning. And the degree to which anything is done, it is not the case where a lot of uh, tissue is removed. So I, I, I must uh, disagree with that, you know. Because it is for a man with a foreskin and a man who doesn't have a foreskin, it's really quite different. The degree to which the amount of tissue is removed is significant. If I may be frank, as part of my job, I see many women. There is no significant anatomical difference between the, the Malay Muslim ladies I see and, the, and women from other backgrounds. From that perspective, I say that the, it, is, it is likely whatever is done is more token or ritualistic in nature rather than any significant uh, removal of tissue being done. I believe quite a number proceed on with it because, uh, you know, they, they have, they discuss it with their family and, and those who proceed on with it, they will, uh, uh, they will approach the uh, practitioners whom they know will do it. Generations ago, this was the, the, the thinking and generally female circumcision, at least Sunat Prompan, which is done in a local context at least, is more based on a religious cultural sort of tradition rather than any clear medical indication uh, as opposed to that of male circumcision. But I think it is always quite useful if you're a parent to, to ask more questions or to, you know, inquire from the doctor or to find out a little bit more for yourself like before having your child go through these procedures, whether it's necessary, things like that. So I just tell them that there's no clear medical indication for it. And then I let them decide for themselves as to what they choose to do for their female daughters. Zaman dulu dulu kalau orang perempuan sunat pakai bidan Melayu kita. Tapi ada syarat-syaratnya ada bunga lah, tujuh macam bunga. Uh, untuk IT, untuk sunat dia kan, uh, dia ada bunga untuk mandi dia lah. To me, like upholding tradition is a thing, yeah, it's a good thing, but at the same time, you know, like to what extent should we follow tradition? Just because it doesn't fit into what you deem as human right, it doesn't mean that it violates or um, their rights. We cannot deny that the human, United Nations Human Rights under the Female Genital Mutilation Act is that it is biased towards the Western perspective. In the sense that it doesn't really cater itself and fits to different cultures and different practices. So maybe it's only a tradition that we still follow from the old time. Uh, 
but not sure like secara Islam whether it's a need or not. Perempuan atau lelaki-lelaki mesti nak sunat lah. Tapi sekarang modern kita pun tak boleh paksa kan. Adakah nenek akan berikan pilihan kepada anak-anak nenek? Mana boleh, tak boleh mesti. <laughs> mesti nak sunat kan. Pasal kita orang Islam kan. This procedure is done to girls at a very young age, meaning they are not aware that it's being done to them. And no consent given. It's not easy to break tradition. We, we, we know it. You know, to be the first to say no in your family, to face up to all the male and female members of your family. Yeah. But to me, it's, it's us of you. You know, it's your duty to actually stand firm and not allow this to happen. And when it comes to my grandchildren, I have to also stand firm knowing that I will upset the other side of the family, that I cannot allow this to perpetuate. I am the generation that is going to put this to an end. Mungkin anda boleh kongsi apakah reaksi uh, keluarga anda dengan keputusan anda untuk um, tidak uh, katakan anak anda? So, my relationship with my daughter, they're glad that I look out for them, you know, as a mother, you know, that I step up and protect them from this ancient practice and I think uh, for me the the best the greatest joy is that they trust in me as a parent that I look out for them which I felt my parents did not let's be responsible parents your role is to protect your children you know not send them for harmful practices that are no longer relevant Apakah pandangan Usaza tentang mendapatkan konsen? Anak-anak kecil ni kita panggil uh, under age lah. Eh? Uh, mereka yang under age. Okay, jadi di sini kita tak lihat kaitan. Eh? Kita lihat perkara yang lain lah. Eh? Uh, ajak anak uh, keluar pergi excursion. Kita masih perlukan konsen ibu bapa kan? Ajak anak-anak pergi ke sana ke sini. Eh, kerana mereka anak-anak yang, yang memberikan konsen adalah ibu bapa. Kebiasaannya seperti itu, konsen, uh, walaupun kita merasakan bahawa anak-anak itu ada hak, ya, tetapi mereka namanya anak-anak. Hatta jangan cakap tentang hitan, perkara lain pun, konsen itu kita tak berikan kepada anak-anak. Anak-anak itu nak sangat sebagai contoh, sekolah kata kita nak daki bukit, eh, daki gunung. Anak-anak nak sangat, saya nak anak-anak, tapi mak bapak dia rasa tak sedap lah. Saya tak nak kasih konsen. Ibu bapa kasih konsen itu mengikut ilmu mereka. Kita nak jadi ibu bapa ni sebenarnya kita most of the time we have no idea what we are doing. I'm telling you that. We have no idea what we are doing. But kita cuba setiap upaya untuk belajar, get ourselves educated. Kita cuba setiap upaya untuk cari tahu, cari informasi dan kemudian kita buat pilihan yang kita rasa itu adalah terbaik untuk anak kita. Nah, di sini kalau ada para wanita yang merasakan bahawa dirinya itu di violated eh, oleh ibu bapanya, di sini ibu bapa mereka melakukan perkara tersebut kerana itulah ilmu yang ada pada ibu bapa mereka pada ketika itu. Sekarang ini pasti mereka akan kata gini, sebab tu ustazah kita mesti mendidik mereka ibu bapa. Jadi ibu bapa boleh boleh ada ilmu eh, kemudian tak berikan izin itu eh, keizinan untuk khitan terhadap anak mereka. Ini yang saya sebutkan tadi pilihan. Eh, jadi ibu bapa berhak ke atas anak-anak mereka mengikut apa yang mereka tahu. Kalau ada ibu bapa merasakan bahawa saya dah cukup informasi, hati saya ni dah dah Uh, dah kuat, dah tegar, dah yakin bahawa saya tidak mahu hitankan anak saya. Nah, itu menurut ibu bapanya, itu adalah yang terbaik buat anak-anaknya. Lakukan itu. Silakan sebab itu kita tak boleh memaksa ibu bapa kata, saya tak nak hitankan anak saya, kita tak boleh memaksa dia. Kau tak hitankan, bukan Islam. Kau tak hitankan, kau berdosa. Ini yang saya ingin sampaikan kepada para ibu bapa kalau misalnya mereka rasa terdesak eh oleh mungkin orang yang lebih berumur eh mungkin ibu bapa mereka untuk menghatankan menghitankan anak uh, cucunya tapi itu kan anak kita hatta nenek datuk pun 
eh, bukan mereka yang membuatkan uh, keputusan yang buat pilihan keputusan lain ibu bapa eh, kalau misalnya nenek dan datuk kata hitankan anaknya cari tanya kenapa mak kenapa mak nak saya hitankan anak saya kalau maknya kata sebab uh, sebab buat je lah eh, buat je lah tak saya perlu ada Uh, informasi ilmu boleh tanya seperti itu bukan Islam ni bukan bukan jumut bukan yang tak boleh tanya eh tak boleh tanya tau dah dah hukumnya sekian buat aja Islam tak seperti itu Islam adalah ilmu yang kita menggunakan akal juga kita menggunakan kepintaran kita mesti berfikir Islam adalah ilmu berfikir eh? jadi cik, kenapa mak mak tak boleh cakap sebab mak punya mak buat tak ada ibu bapa yang kemudiannya nak nak khitankan anak-anaknya sebab nak menyakitkan. Tak ada ibu bapa yang kemudian kenapa nak khitankan anak biar biar dia sakit. Tak ada. Jadi apa yang dah berlaku itu mengikut kefahaman ibu bapa mereka ketika itu. Zaman itu. Kita dah zaman sekarang yang kemudian kita ada uh, uh, pergerakan eh, movement ataupun aktivis yang yang ingin uh, membenteras sebagai contoh. Nah, di sini mereka pun boleh berikan evidence mereka. Mereka boleh berikan fakta mereka. Nah, sekarang ini mereka sebagai ibu bapa, ilmu yang ada pada mereka ini yang kemudian membuat mereka pilihan untuk tidak melakukan khitan itu terhadap anak mereka. Tapi kita tak boleh juga memaksa orang yang kemudiannya ibu bapa yang pemahaman mereka itu mengatakan bahawa saya sebagai ibu bapanya, saya ingin kebaikan. Oh, ni tak educated ni zaman kita 21st century. <laughs> Jadi di sini lain orang lain pemahaman. Eh? Uh, sebab tu kita ada istilah apa? We agree to disagree. Hmm. Eh? Nah, di sini kata macam mana kita nak dis- disagree? Menyak- menyakitkan anak. Okey, kalau kamu merasakan ianya menyakitkan anakmu, okey, jangan khitankan dia. Dan kemudian besok lusa kalau tukar, kalau tukar, eh, hukum seperti Mesir sebagai contoh, nah, itu berpandukan ilmu, bukan ikut. Uh, bukan kerana orang memaksa atau orang suruh tukar tidak semuanya perlu ada ilmu ada fakta di atas meja besok lusa terjadi hukum seperti ini seperti itu semuanya bukan berda, ber, bukan ikut angin saya tak saya suka bukan ikut angin bukan uh, angin ke barat kita ikut barat angin ke timur kita ikut timur tidak tapi kita ikut ilmu dan fakta yang dibentangkan lain ustazah lain jawapan sama juga lain ustaz lain jawapan tapi pendekatan ini pendekatan saya secara pribadi. Nak ikut silakan tak nak sudah. Saya akan beritahu kepada para ibu biasanya datang kepada para ibu saya katakan seperti ini. Oh khitan uh, budak perempuan eh, kalau kalau nak tahu hukumnya hukumnya adalah makrumah saya sebut sebut itu. Dia bukan bukan uh, hatta bukan sesuatu yang yang wajib eh, bukan yang sangat-sangat digalakkan tidak tapi dibolehkan. Pilihan pada anda. Kalau yang secara muktamad, kita masih belum pasti lagi. Tapi memang kalau kita sebagai seorang uh, yang uh, mengikuti eh, mengikuti uh, ajaran baginda Nabi Muhammad SAW, kita yakin bahawa apa yang di, disampaikan oleh Nabi Muhammad SAW itu bukan sesuatu yang boleh membawa kemudaratan. Jadi ini yang saya ingin memahamkan eh, yang suka mendesak eh, kemudian menghukum kau tak khitan eh. Saya pernah dengar. Eh, you tak khitankan eh. Ah, macam mana ni nanti anak you dah besar? Macam mana apa? Kenapa? Tak khitan dia akan jadi uh, dia akan jadi liar. Itu misconception. Hatta dalam Islam pun tak ada yang seperti itu. Tak ada yang kata kalau tak hatta khitan nanti anak jadi liar. Dari mana tu saya tak faham. Jadi kalau engkau tak khitan nanti anak kau jadi apa? Jadi apa? Jadi liar. Mister Where's the evidence? Dia dapat dari mana? Itu salah. Eh, saya nak sampaikan ni. Kalau tidak menghitankan anaknya, tidak menjadi liar. <laughs> liar itu dari pendidikan. Eh, dari pendidikan bukan dari hitan. Hitan tak hitan kalau pendidikan tak tak di disertakan, itulah yang kemudian uh, akan menjadikan seseorang mungkin kurang akhlak. perlu dibezakanlah antara uh, FGM atau FGC dengan khitan uh, syar'i kerana dia dua perkara yang berbeza terus ya, bahkan Islam atau Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam datang nabi dah menentang FGM ni 
Nabi kata jangan kamu buang klitoris tu jangan buang eh, kulit tu jangan buang seluruhnya Nabi kata di hujung saja Mengapa kita masih lihat ada empat peringkat yang berbeza? Terkadang adat bangsa, bila satu bangsa itu mempunyai adat, adat dan budaya. Dan apabila mereka masuk Islam, budaya dan adat yang sebelum Islam mereka bawa ke dalam zaman yang mereka dah masuk Islam. Dan kemudian kita mengingat atau orang ingat, oh inilah ajaran Islam. Uh, saya merujuk kepada apa yang berlaku di Mesir pada seorang uh, tak kata bayilah kanak-kanak berusia 10 tahun uh, Nagla Hussein eh, ketika itu dia melakukan uh, khitan dia melakukan khitan dan cara khitan dia salah uh, daripada sudut agama salah uh, kerana uh, khitan dia itu dia memotong seluruh klitoris dan juga uh, bahagian uh, labia majora dengan minora tadilah. Amalan khitan itu difilemkan oleh seorang wartawan. Dia kemudian keluar laporan bahawa uh, apa yang dilakukan ke atas Nagla Hussein ini adalah salah satu daripada amalan Islam. Padahal uh, dia bukan Islam. Dan Rasulullah juga sendiri menentang FGM. Mengapa sunat perempuan sering dilakukan ketika masih bayi? Kalau kita lihat, Sunat lelaki pun digalakkan uh, ketika masih bayi lagi pada umur uh, kalau dalam apa, uh, teks-teks uh, para ulama kita yang ada menyebut tujuh hari, yang ada menyebutkan uh, apa tiga bulan, empat puluh hari. Cuma uh, pada menetapkan had bila sunat itu pun terjadi persesian antara ulama. Cuma yang kita dapat simpulkan bahawa kita memilih uh, satu umur yang mana bayi itu boleh menanggung pelaksanaan khitan tersebut dan juga family atau ya, ibu dan ayah telah bersedia untuk menjaga bayi yang dikhitankan. Imam Al-Baghawi rahimahullah ta'ala dia tidak menggalakkan khitan wanita dilakukan setelah 8 tahun. Waktu saya interview beberapa orang doktor, mereka pun mengatakan sama yang ada tak menggalakkan lebih 7 tahun, ada tak menggalakkan lebih daripada 3 tahun. Tapi bukan maknanya terus lahir dikhitankan kerana kena melihat syarat-syarat yang lain. Maksudnya bayi itu dah mampu untuk menahan kesakitan. Bahkan ada kajian yang mengatakan kenapa dalam hadis menyebutkan tujuh hari kerana setelah tujuh hari itu bayi itu dah produce vitamin K. Vitamin K ini maknanya dia kalau satu orang tu dia kena luka apa, blood clot eh. Darah tu dia tak mengalir terus. Jadi kalau sebelum tujuh hari vitamin K dalam badan baby sangat rendah. Jadi sekarang saya akan bertemu dengan Saza. Saza seorang pengasas badan NFGC Singapore. Um, FGC bermakna Female Genital Cutting ataupun Katan Perempuan. Apa tujuan NFGC Singapore? So I think as a Muslim community, we need direction from our leaders, right? We need our leaders to tell us what to stand for, uh, what to follow, what to do, which doctrine to follow. Uh, and I think that's when we need our leaders to come out and say. What, um, whatever it is that they have researched to come out and say is this something that they can condone within Singapore with registered medical practitioners? Uh, is this a medical practice that should be continued? Uh, if it is, then what are the regulations surrounding it? Uh, if it isn't, then how then can we stop doctors from, from, provi- from providing this practice? And I know that often um, the kind of the backlash that we have is that people say that oh, if doctors don't do it, then people will just go to Mak Bidan. So and the FGC Singapore does not want to ban sunat perempuan from Singapore. We don't believe criminalizing it will help anyone uh, because this is done by an already minority community using the penal justice system on on an already minority community would not be helpful. Uh, there have been many many countries that have banned it, but it still continued happening. So what we believe is re-education and regulation will eventually lead to critical thinking and ending this practice. Uh, I think then the understanding of harm of sunat perempuan, because often we say that, oh, sunat perempuan is not FGM, right? Female genital mutilation. Uh, but the problem is it still carries risk, it still carries harm. When you cut yourself on your skin, you will bleed, right? You bleed, there's risk of infection. 
that's the same exact same risk that happens when you cut a baby's genitals. Um, so I think there's no understanding of this harm. Then I think also there's a lack of understanding of the different of the diversity of opinion surrounding this practice from religious leaders. When you cut a piece of skin, it's painful, firstly, uh, and babies do feel pain. I think that's something that people don't really understand, is that babies do feel pain, but they might not be able to express it in the same way that we do. So. Uh, just because they don't express it, no, doesn't mean they don't remember. You know, the mind forgets, but the body remembers. The body keeps the score. Um, so for a lot of survivors of Sunat Perempuan, for, for some survivors, uh, there are mental flashbacks or there are instances of trauma because of, because of the cutting. Uh, and so this can take in any form, you know, because even if your baby mind doesn't remember the cutting, but the trauma remains in the body. So perhaps things like having your legs parted, that reminds you of what happened to you as a baby before, just before you were cut and you were in pain. Uh, so that action of me putting your legs apart, that brings you back the memories or that brings back a trauma, a trauma response, which you know, can be elevated heart rate, anxiety, panic attacks, all these things. So, so there are so many risks associated with this cutting, um, which if it is a medical procedure, then it needs to be treated as a medical procedure, right? If it's not a medical procedure, and it is actually not, right? Because it's not taught in any medical school, it's not taught in any medical textbook, if it's not a medical procedure, then the question is why are doctors even doing it? Doctors who are supposed to be regulated under the Ministry of Health. In the same way that a baby will cry when it gets the injection, you know, like a vaccination, or the baby will cry when blood is taken, or, uh, you know, in the same way, it, there, is, there is pain. Babies do perceive pain. Generally, I do not think this procedure, if done by the GPs, takes particularly long. I believe it is quite a quick procedure. But in the same way the baby would cry if there's a vaccination or blood taking, yes, the baby will perceive pain for, at that moment, yes. In Singapore, uh, general practitioners or family doctors are licensed to do simple uh, surgical procedures in the clinic. Yeah, so male circumcision, there's a very standard way of teaching how to do it, how to manage complications. So it's a very... Uh, recognized sort of procedure and it's something that uh, for example if you're a trainee in the surgical department you are taught how to do it they do many cases and then the outcomes are vetted audited and things like that now, this is not a procedure that is taught in medical school 